we're both biologists, obviously he heavily involved in and concerned about the teaching of, of e evolution and mm -hmm. um, the threat to it, which comes from ignorant bigots uh, of, of a religious persuasion. There are various, I mean, obviously we agree about what the end we want to achieve, but there are differences among biologists of tactics yes. and how to, how to proceed. Um, you're a closer observer of the American scene than I am, obviously. How do you see these tactical differences? There are the aggressive types, the, the outspoken types like you and I, who are out there at the forefront trying to push, push really hard. Um, and then I think there's, there's lots of people who are trying to react to that aggressive, that aggressive approach, and they're trying to smooth things over. And, like Eugenie and, Scott, for, for example. Or, yeah, or, or, Eugenie's, yeah. A, Eugenie's a good example. I mean, yeah. she's, she's, she's clearly on the right side of everything, right? Mm, yeah. And she's, she's on mm. our side. Uh, and, and what she's doing is uh, she's, she's trying to work at local levels. She's trying to talk to people and trying to get people to come over to the side of defending uh, evolution and good science teaching. And, 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 and sometimes I, I kind of feel like you and I are... The, the boogeyman that she can yeah, use. Yes, I mean, we're, we're rocking the boat. <laughs> yes, and I, I think that's a valuable role for somebody to play. Yeah, that's right? exactly yeah. my feeling yeah. as well, yes. Yeah. I mean, I can see where people like Jeannie are coming from because what they're doing is they, they know that there are pastors and preachers who are telling their flock evolution and God are completely incompatible Therefore, since you believe in God, you obviously, we, we, we can't tolerate evolution. Yeah. Now, she wants to say, no, 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 you can join us. Uh, you can go on believing in God. It's fine. Uh, right. You can go on having your God. There's no incompatibility with e evolution at all. Um, whereas my approach is that I think that's only one skirmish in a larger war. Yes. And, and I mean, I, I, I care passionately about the question whether there actually is a supernatural designer in the universe. Right. And that, that's what really matters to me. So I, I think probably you, you feel well, the same. Well, yeah, and it's, it's, it's also a question of what I want my fellow citizens to do. And I want my fellow citizens to be rational members of society. And too often they're getting hung up on, on this, this nonsense. And so I, I kind of feel like I have to attack and at the level of the nonsensical stuff they're saying, and forget about the bits where they're, they're going along with me. Um, a, a really good example is, I, I don't know if you read Michael Dowd's book, Thank God for Evolution? Uh, bits of it. Bits yes. of it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I read that with, with, with a growing sense of horror, actually, because he's clearly on our side. He wants good science teaching, right? But on the other hand, you read his book, and he's, you know, he's got sections where he talks about the virtues of speaking in tongues. Yes. What, how, how are we supposed to react to that? Exactly, that, yes. That, that's kind of undermining the entire enlightenment goal yes. of, yes. of getting more that, rational. That's so, going very far, though. I mean, that's, yes. that's not... Um, that's not Eugenie Scott. No, that's Michael no. Dowd. But <laughs> I, think, um, I think Eugenie Scott is more what Steve Gould called Noma, um, which was anathema, which is anathema, to me, yeah, uh, well, we better expand a bit on that non-overlapping magisteria. There's no conflict between religion and science. Science gets the what is it? Gets the ages of rocks, and religion gets the rock of ages. Um, yeah. But more, more um, uh, dangerously, I think Steve was ready to hand over morality yes. to religion and the sort of deep, fundamental questions of existence to to, to religion, and that. That would, that's just going much too far. Right. No, that, you know, I, I really love Steve Gould's work, and uh, it's one of the things that turned me on to evolutionary biology was, was Gould and Dawkins, reading those when I was growing up. But, yeah, I, I read Rocks of Ages with great disappointment. It was a horrible book. It, yes. It, you know, it didn't ring true to me, and I don't think it rings true to the... No, I bet it didn't ring true to Steve yeah. either. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, because, I mean, when you think about it, the, the territory that he, that he was in fact prepared to see to them, no miracles, no, no virgin birth, no resurrection. Um, there, 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 really, there really is nothing much left yes. of, of religion. 
Uh, but then he goes and hands over morality and um, yeah. and deep questions. Um, Why okay. are we here? Yes. Well, we agree about that. Um, going back to the point about um, whether we welcome people in and say, oh, no, well, the, the point about the, the, pa the pastors and, pr and preachers who have taught their flock that there is an incompatibility between evolution and, uh, and, and God. And Jeannie will, will, will try to dispel that and say, no, no, there's no, it's fine, you can, you can have both. I'm not sure that a better tactic isn't the exact opposite. I mean, if they've already been told that there's an incompatibility <laughs> between religion and evolution, well, let's tell them that, let's convince them of evolution and we're, and we're there. Because after all, we've got the evidence. I mean, no, no, no seriously educated person can doubt that evolution is a fact. Correct. And so all we've got to do now, since they've been carefully pre-trained by their preachers to believe there's an incompatibility, uh, is to, any hope there, do you think? Turn the pastors into servants of science. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, okay. But, uh, you know, that, the thing is, I, I think most people in this country are not predisposed to think that evolution has anything good going for it. They've been lied no, to pretty not, thoroughly. No, they're not. But I mean, if, if, if we could take somebody who's been from, from the cradle up, has been brainwashed into believing that there's an incompatibility. Now, you take that person and give him some tutorials and, and actually show him the facts. And mm -hmm. if you show, show them the facts, they can't come away not really understanding it if you, if you pay enough attention to it. Now, whereas if they've been pre-trained pre by somebody like a bishop, who, who says, oh, there's no incompatibility, evolution is yes. God's way of doing things, then there won't be a problem. But if, if they've got it firmly entrenched in their heads that there is an incom incompatibility, then in a sense we've got an easier task right. if we want to kill religion, uh, because half our work's been done for us since we, all we've got to do is to persuade people of what is actually obvious to anybody yes. who looks sufficiently carefully at the facts, namely that evolution is true. Yeah, I, I, had a, I had a very similar conversation with, with a conservative Christian minister a while back um, where he was, he was complaining to me because uh, the kids in town come to my college and they take the biology courses and I teach them all this materialist, naturalist, phenomenological, you know, rational stuff and, and it's undermining their, their belief system. And, and I had to tell them that, you know, I, I do not get into the classroom and tell them that their religion is wrong. I do not do that. I do not say, you know, in the classroom I have, a, I have a job to do and it's not to tell them that God doesn't exist. And so what, what I told them is that what he's doing basically is that they're taking all these kids in Sunday school and they're telling them that it's an article of their faith that the sky is green. And then they come to the university and I don't tell them that they're wrong. I tell them just to open their eyes and sure. look up. Yeah. And, and that's what's hurting, you know, that his, his concern was his kids would come to college and they're losing faith. But well, I have to tell him it's quite. not my fault, I mean, it's his fault. Absolutely, yes. it's his fault, exactly, yes. yes. Whereas if he, if he taught them like a Church of England vicar, there wouldn't be any problem because they'd have been, they'd have been predisposed to think um, that there's no, no incompatibility. Yeah, th those guys are nearly atheists already, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. well, yes. Um, do you ever get students complaining that you're offending their beliefs? I mean, you don't talk about, re about religion, you just, you just said, but simply by teaching them about evolution, do they sort of fold their arms and kind of look defiant? And, yes. And, yes, yes I, I, I've actually, you know, because, because I've got this blog that's rather out there and everybody can see it, I, my first day of class, I have to go in and tell them that I'm not going to grade them on the basis of their political affiliation or their religious beliefs. Okay, all they have to do is understand the material of the course. Uh, but I, I still get people who get very upset. Um, one of my colleagues told me, you know, they, they, they usually don't confront me, but one of my colleagues told me that uh, one of my students had to come to her and talk to her about this and say, she, she basically said she, she felt nauseous going into the classroom because I was throwing out all this evolution stuff and she just couldn't take it. Physically, I mean literally, Physically literally wanted Ill. to throw up. She, she could not <laughs> stomach coming into class. And, and, and seriously, I, you know, I, I have this reputation, but like we talked about earlier, I'm, I'm a teddy bear. I do not stand up and rant about the evils of religion in the classroom. 